Hi, fellow traders. Well, I guess that extra day off we had, you know, helped me out a lot because I had a pretty good day today. Not the best of days, but it's been a whole lot better than it has been the last couple of weeks. Um, but I knew this day was going to be good because it started out with an awesome um, mentor session. And, you know, I'm going to share a little bit about this guy who I who I who we met, I met with this morning um a little bit later on but you know he is writing his own trading story and he is the hero of it so and and you guys we have to be the hero of our own story you know we're writing it we can't allow anybody else to write it you know it's up to us to decide how this is going to go you know, we don't decide what the market's going to bring us, but it's up to us how we react to it and how we make the best of of these situations. And, you know, he's he's done a good job doing that. I try to do that every day. Um, sometimes it gets the best of me, but, you know, we come back. You know, we move on to the next one. You know, that's what this is about. We can't dwell on something for so long that it kind of screws us up so we're you got to remember we're the author of our own story so there's no reason why we can't be the hero in it all right so let's take a look at today uh atl was the first trade um this one i i kind of confused myself at the open um, and a lot of times this, this is what happens. Um, we get this huge opening candle and what I'm doing is I'm trying to, uh, figure out where's, where's going to be the best entry to this. You know, what's going to be in the way of me getting in and I'm watching this candle. I'm like, well, once this, um, candle came down here and it pulled back. And we had this huge wick. I automatically knew I wanted to trade off of the body. And so um, somehow I had drawn the candle. At the time I drew this line to start with, the body was down here somewhere. And so I left the line down here and ended up, you know, using that line to get in because that's what I do. I draw the line and that's how mechanical I am with these opening range trades you see me draw the low and then once we break the low i'm going to enter unless there's something else that i got to deal with well <clears throat> i guess fortunately this line kind of coincided with the pre-market low which is where i wanted to get in anyway so you know technically i didn't mess up because that's where i needed to get in anyway i didn't want to get in above the the pre-market low because a lot of times this acts as resistance and so i ended up getting in and you know this thing did take a little bit you know take a little bit to sell off but it never really gave me any indication that it was going to blow past anything i just felt well maybe this thing is just not going to go because it dipped down here, then it got bought back up, and then we opened, you know, back above the pre-market low, and I'm like, oh, here we go. Um, but it did, you know, give us a nice sell candle. I didn't put my order right on the um, red to green line or green to red line, however you want to look at it. This is yesterday's close price, and so whenever we're moving below yet yesterday's close we say we're going from green to red as long as we're above yesterday's close we're green on the day and anytime we go below it we're red on the day at least that's the way i i do it um some people may have different meanings or whatever but that's that's the way i do it and it held this so i i got out and initially i was going to take everything off here you know, you guys that were listening to me, I was like, I'm going to take it all off here. 
And then when we made this huge wash candle, I'm like, I'm going to just take two thirds off. And then let's see where we go. So I took two thirds off and it looked like we were going to bounce and take me back out at break even. But it just kept getting weaker and weaker. And eventually we sold off and we got to this 3089 level. So I took another piece off here. And there was another level at 3050 or just below 3050. I think it was around 3046 or 47. And so I put my other order at 3050, but it didn't get down there. And as soon as we claimed the nine, I went ahead and took it off. Uh, and that's textbook for these trades. Uh, once it bounces and it takes the nine out, um, I'm done with it. Now, if it rejects and starts to sell, I'm all over that trend continuation. But if it continued to bounce, you know, I'm not going to mess with it. And so really a textbook trade on HAL, not a whole lot of money because I only went in with 300 shares. I went in with smaller size um, because all of the stuff I've been dealing with throughout um, the last couple of weeks, I made up my mind over the weekend that, hey, I need to just go back and kind of go back to the basics and just trade with a comfortable size and just let this thing, you know, work. And um, that's what we did. You know, like I said, anytime you feel that you're getting out of sync or out of sorts, you got to have that happy place that you always come back to. That's your foundation. That's your core. Because it's like I can lose all my money and you give me $1,500. I'll go back to this and I can trade my way out of it. I mean, I've done it right here in, in chat. Well, in front of you guys in the community for at least six or seven times. You know, it's it's not hard to do once you have this foundation built and something that you can always come back to. So not bad, um, 145.54. And then um, MDSO, we've been watching this in chat forever. And we kept looking at this ready to break down. Now here and here, and everybody was ready to short this, ready to short this. And I kept saying, you know, wait for this to establish, you know, claim or confirm a loss of the 20. Uh, here we would get below it. We would never make a new low and we would trade back above it. Here again, we never made a new low, trade back above it. So the minute we made a new low, and I was actually in a, um, toward the end of a mentor session at lunch. And, you know, we were watching it. And I'm like, this is it. This is what I've been talking about. Because we were talking about this. And so, you know, I was like, I took it. You know, both of us took it. And damn, if it didn't turn around and stop us out. And so I told him. You know, look, if this thing stops us out, I'm going long. You know, I, I'm I'm going long because that means that we're going to run. This thing is going to rip into close because we tried all of this. And once we got this dip below it and it couldn't hold, that's it. You know, this trend is still intact. Just this little dip was just a um, clickbait or bear trap, whatever you want to call it. And But if you look at this, this has all been slowly trending up. So we got along and, you know, just kind of let it ride. As long as this held up, you know, we kept going. And I said, as long as we don't confirm a loss of the nine, I mean the, the 20, this thing is going to keep going. And, you know, we did get some profit out of it. Now, I probably, 
I, I did jump the gun on this. Um, this should have been my target here. I should have waited and took some off at 88, 87, and then waited and took some more off at 89. But I just kind of got a little, you know, it's, it's residual effects from the last couple of weeks. You're going to deal with stuff like that. Um, things like that are going to creep in and it's, it crept into me and I was like, damn, I need to take profit. Plus I, I know I got stopped out on this one. So I'm like, I, I need to, you know, it's just eating away at me. So I ended up taking it off, taking some off again. And then, um, it finally hit my 89 target, but look at what it did going into the close. I was out enough to where I didn't have to, to dump this at, um, 330. I was well within two to one and I could have let this thing run in the close and, you know, really, you know, do something. But I set that because, you know, I, I got to go pick my son up at three o'clock every day. And I'm not what really watching the last hour, so I had to put it on autopilot. Um, but really, a really good trade. You know, I didn't really make much on on the, the ticker. I only 69 bucks. But that's because, you know, this was a pretty healthy hit I took right here. So, uh, we brought that back around. And now, CD... Um, NS was the only earnings trade that I was looking at. I looked at ZIONS and it didn't have a history of gapping. So I kind of dismissed it. And then I looked at um, the CDNS and then I looked at Whirlpool. I forgot the ticker for Whirlpool, but those were the three that hit that actually hit my scan because you know, I've got a scan for specifically for earnings, um, WHR. And WHR looked good, but it was higher priced. I felt okay with CDNS. This had a history of gapping as well. And so that's the one I kind of chose to watch. And I can't watch but one stop while I'm gone. Um, I only have a little 11-inch laptop that you know I use in the car with the the car Wi-Fi and I only have that one you know I don't have multiple screens I just had that one laptop so I can only watch one stock so I have to pick the one that I'm gonna watch I can't really flip back and forth and so this was the one you know I told you guys this was the one I was watching what I was looking for it to do but this did not close the way we like to see a stock close that's going to gap up. Um, but the last couple of weeks, the setups have not completed because the stock didn't close according to my plan. And so after going back this week weekend and kind of looking and, and watching some of these things, in watching some of these these trades, I realize you know maybe they're not pulling that trick anymore. So I'm gonna have to go with with my conviction. Um, what's this stock gonna do? What are the numbers telling me? And you know that's kind of what we did here. We did try to pull back a little bit on the last candle, but um, you know I don't know. It, the, the jury's still out. So I don't know going through this earnings season if my little telltale sign that gives me that extra edge or that extra boost of confidence in taking these trades, you know, did the market take that away from me? Or is it just going through a phase? I don't know. Um, but we're going to see. You know, we're we're going to see. So not a, you know, not a bad trade. It didn't get to, it did get up to 68, but it didn't get to 68 on the bid side, which is, you know, where I would sell it. It would have to hit 68 on the bid side for my order to trigger. 
So I never did hit 68. So on the bid side. So ended up once we lost the nine here, it looked like it was coming in. I took it off. But as I look at it now, it looks like it it actually um, went back up and went over 68. <laughs> but it was after I would have had to be out anyway. You know, at 6 o'clock, um, trading shuts off at sure Trader. So, you know, I had to be out by 6 anyway. So I never would have got that. But not a bad day. Um, I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm okay with it. I just need to keep building off of it. You know, stay consistent. Don't trade outside of myself. Don't try to force anything. Just continue to let the market come to me. And, you know, we're going to take it from there. So, you know, pretty good, pretty good. All right, so I told you I was going to share with you. I wanted to show you this. This is... um. No, this isn't right. And then, okay, here we go. This is um, one of the traders in the community that I am. Um, I've been working with. Honestly, he's been in the community since January of 20, 2017 when I started. He was with me at the other place that I was at prior um, and through all this time, you know, this, the beginning of this year, he said, look, I'm tired of this. You know, I'm glad you started this roadmap because I want to start from the beginning. I want to start fresh. You know, this is what I need to do. And so he started in Jan this January with 2,500 bucks. He only trades the five minute opening range, breakout or breakdown, and trend continuation. That's it. He doesn't do any reversals. He doesn't do any um, earnings trades, no all-day holes, nothing. Just those two strategies. Those were the two he wanted to focus in on. He only trades stocks between $20 and $70. So when I'm trading, you know, the $100 stocks, or we're trading these $100 stocks, or whatever he's trading the smaller ones he's picking the ones that he trades he has no trade idea subscription he's using the scans in the chat room that I'm streaming he's using those scans to find the stocks that he trades you now he looks at the ORB and let's say there aren't any stocks in the price range you know he looks at the the earnings ones like we look at. Um, and then he's got Think or Swim. So he'll go on there and look at the, you know, pre-market movers and see if there's any, you know, stocks within 20 to $70 that, that he can trade. And look at what he's done. He's not making a ton of money. But he's consistently growing his account consistently growing his account now this could be deceiving you know this right now this is is deceiving you're looking at this it's like man he's only had two red weeks and all this i'm gonna tell you he has some red days he has two to three red days a week okay like i said i meet with him you know the way he wanted to use his month his time was he wanted to meet with me every Friday morning for 15 minutes, you know, and we review that week and we didn't meet last Friday because of the holiday. And so we met this morning, but he has two to three red days a week and he has streaks of red like here, you know, right after this week is a red week this week. He had three red days in a row. After finishing the week red, three red days in a row. Most people would have said, this strategy sucks. I don't, I'm not using it anymore, blah, 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 blah. But he didn't do that. He stuck to what he knew that that strategy 
brought him to where he was at that point. He had made over, um, he had eclipsed the thousand dollars, but then gave a little bit back, you know, but he knew he had, that had helped him make a thousand dollars and he was on the right track for the first time in all these two, three years he's been trying to trade. It took that little focus of, hey, I'm going to treat this like a business. I'm going to approach it like a business every day. I'm going to come in with that mindset and I'm going to handle my business. And that's that's what it took. You know, just getting started. He journals everything. And, you know, and what we do that 15 minutes a hit, you know, on Friday mornings is he summarizes his journal and we go through it. And if he has any problems, you know, he'll tell me. So I, when we meet the next week, I can have stuff in place to help him with it, or I can email him something or whatever, but he is all about business and not wasting time straight to the point and, and handling it. You know, so I was really, really, you know, impressed with how well he's been doing. Now, I never really looked at his um, profit curve, but the, because I shared some Friday, he sent me here. He said, hey, look at this. And, you know, I know I meet with him every week, but I really wasn't looking or tracking what he was doing. But up to last week, he was almost at two grand. I mean, he reached the two grand threshold, but gave some back last week. And I told him, it seems like this is your, your MO. You reach a threshold and then the next week you give some back. You reach a threshold and then the next week you give some back. So that's kind of mentally, that's what happens to us sometimes. But he's trading smaller size, one to 300 shares just like I do most of the time. Um, you know, he doesn't get the huge moves sometimes that we get. Again, he doesn't trade the earnings. So, you know, some of those big trades he doesn't get. But he's going to grow into that. You know, he, he's going to grow into that. Next month, he's going to start looking at the um, reversals and, and, you know, looking to add that to his his thing and, and that's not going to be too hard because that that's just a trend reversal strategy just the opposite of trend continuation you know so that he's going to look at um you know be ready this summer when we start looking at pre-market trades you know i don't know when he's going to feel comfortable trading earnings he may never be comfortable doing it you know, who knows? But I thought this was really, really great. And it started my morning out. I mean, awesome. So I don't know if you guys could tell. Uh, it was, I had a little bit more pep in my step this morning. You know, going through pre-market and all of that. Even though it was a little slow, things didn't look all that that promising at the open. You know, I was really... I was really pumped up. So, and what I wanted to show you was this is my equity curve right here. This one looks a little bit smoother and more consistent because you can see I go brain dead every now and then and I've got a little, you know, hiccups along the way. But this one looks a little bit smoother. So when he starts, you know, tr trading bigger stocks, um, you know, getting bigger moves, I think he's going to do very well. Incredible discipline, um, patience, and, you know, one, one word, one word, persistence. He doesn't let red days, you know, mess him up. He doesn't let red days mess him up. Persistence. 
Doesn't let red weeks mess him up. Persistence. And that, that's what we've got to have. When things don't go our way, we may go through, we, we may even go through a month like that. But we've got to be persistent and dust ourselves off and keep our own trucking. That's what it boils down to. So, uh, just wanted to share that with you guys. And hope you have a great night, a great evening. And we'll get back at this thing tomorrow. Let's see if we can duplicate um, today. And, you know, I, I, I'm, I really, really need not just one. I really need to finish this month strong. You know, from my, to make me feel better. I really need to finish this month strong. So you guys have a great night, great evening, and I will catch you tomorrow.